Welcome back, Rivals. This is Zonia, and you are in the zone. This week, we're going to be taking a look at our New Blood cards. Man, have we got a treat for you this week. This week, our four New Blood cards are Ugwe, or Ogwe, Zera, Daphne, and Yamira. Let's take a closer look at our newest cards. Up first is Ugwe, the uncommon two-star from FPC. At 8-1, Ugwe has the same base stats as Dao Wang. 8 power is the best base power for FPC 2 stars, while the 1 damage is the worst for their 2 stars. As for its ability, Ugwe definitely has a step up from Dao Wang, at least in terms of life gap potential. Ugwe's growth ability makes it stronger in middle rounds, but still very usable in round 1 as well. Keeping growth on heal means you have more freedom for when to play this card as well, so it's more versatile and less predictable. The high max of 12 means it should be pretty easy to get the heal in as well, especially if played in round 2 or 3, improving usefulness. Life gap potential will be 3 damage, 5 with fury, and 3 life in round 1 and round 3, with 4 in round 2 and 0 in round 4, meaning you'll get from 3 to 7 life gap without the fury. A potential 8-9 with fury on a 2 star is pretty amazing, especially if you also take into consideration that he functions a bit like DR as well, something FPC also lacks great cards with. As such, Ugwe is easily one of the top 2 star cards in FPC. Chan, Ichiko, Kusuri, and Marlesia CR are on par with him. So this likely means Ugwe will not be a sure staple, but definitely will see play. One could argue that this is the best 2 star card in FPC due to its life gap potential. This card will probably maintain a decent price, but it won't be worth a fortune. Ultimately, Ugwe is basically an offensive Kusuri, with a little less base damage. This lack of base damage could hurt its play potential, but with 8 power and the ability to soak up your opponent's token SOA card, this is one awesome little 2 star. Versus SOA, he's even better off than Chan, so ultimately it's the all around package that this card offers that makes him so appealing. Definitely give it a shot in your FPC deck. If you wanted my price guess, I would guess Ugwe's price will settle somewhere around 4 to 5,000 clints. Up next is Zera, the common 4 star from Freaks. Coming in at 6-5, this gives her the same stats as Vasily. 6 base power is the worst it gets in Freaks for 4 stars, but the 5 damage is average. As for her ability at support plus 1 power, this makes Zera a force to be reckoned with in mono. If Zera hits 10 power, you are in trouble. This is great for Freaks, as support also means she's good to go on any round. But Mono Freaks is not exactly popular, so that's probably the biggest issue. 10 power allows Zera to compete with the attack manipulation clans, power manipulation clans, and staple power reducers like Rattle. But SOA will make her about as useful as a trapdoor on a lifeboat. So watch out for SOA. Even in a half deck, Zera could cause trouble with 8 power, so don't counter out there either. This is the booba of Freaks after all, so let's not forget how fast booba got banned. Zera's not as good as Arturo, Bogdan, Madelone, or Wolfgang, and she's just about on par with Grudge, Leona, and Masiek. However, she is not as stable. This is definitely a risk-reward card, but when the risk pays off, she'll definitely be worth it. One of the biggest issues, again, is going to be clan competition. Zera is perfect for newer players. Her common status will make her easy to pick up, and her usefulness is on par with some of the best in her clan with the key phrase being, when she works. Anyway, if I had to guess where her price will stabilize, I'd probably guess somewhere around 1 to 2,000 clints. So, don't expect to make a fortune. Next up is Daphne, the common 4-star from Riots. At 7-6, Daphne has the same stats as Farman and PR Hartnell. 7 power is a bit below average in Riots, and 6 damage puts her a bit above average. Her ability, stop plus 16 attack, is insane, but ultimately, it's still a stop ability. I mean, let's be honest here, this is exactly what I want in a stop ability. It needs to absolutely crush the opponent, otherwise, who really cares? If the payoff is only a normal payoff, then why use a stop card at all? 16 is ridiculously good, and something Riot's definitely needs, since a lot of their cards are weak to SOA. The problem is that it's on a 4-star card, which is a huge gamble for your 4-star's ability. If this were on a 3-star, I'd be all on board. However, 4-stars is a little bit harder to sell. Ultimately, there are better cards, but if you can be sure that SOA will be in full force for the week, this is definitely the card that you want to bring along. 
Her usefulness in opening a late round win with Pericles or a second or third round win with Grace should not be underestimated. Daphne is behind Lenora and Pierre Hartnell for sure, unless she hits SOA, and then she's the best in the clan. But let's get real, that's not going to be very often. I'd put her on par with Vera, Farman, and De Couture, though. Not much else to say here, really. As the clan grows, she'll probably lose her usefulness, so don't invest too much in her. If I had to guess her price, I'd guess she'll probably fall to around one to one and a half thousand quints. Finally, we have Yamira, the rare five star from Frozen. At 8-7 and the ridiculous new cancel power and damage modification, this card will make it the big six for sure. Eight power is the best for Frozen five star and seven damage is almost the best in the clan. She is the new monster who will reign over UR's packs supreme for the next six months, if she even lasts that long. Her ability is the new best ability in UR, hands down. Let's just say this up front, this card is a killer. When a release has only a handful of cards that best it, you know it's going to be a monster. When it's also DR proof and nullifies almost half of the clan bonuses in the game, plus has its own bonus to make it quite literally almost unstoppable, that's crazy. Then throw in the fact that Timber makes her a one-hit KO card, and ladies and gents, this card is better than General CR. It's better than 99% of the game's cards after six pills. There are, I believe, only two cards in the game which force her to pill two over them in order to win. Lahane and Gibson. A few others can force two on zero pill plays, and of course, pill manipulation could cause her to play a few in order to make sure she doesn't lose. But other than those two cards and Dragomir, who will hit two after eight pills, Everything else loses or ties her at best. Her biggest counter is SOB, but Cancel Power and SOA plus DR are other viable options for trying to stop this monster. So let's take a look at the very small list of cards which stand a decent shot at combating her, which are not CRs. Mind you, most of these only combat her at low pill counts too. Two star cards are Lahane, Flanagan, and Leah. 3 star, Gina, Granny Mae, Tid, and Shifu. 4 star, Asgroth, Ironjaw, Carrie, and Jengo. And 5 star, Dragomir, Zarya, Nova, and Miss Nova. Approximately 15 cards. That's it. That comprises almost every single card in UR right now, which can consistently combat her right now. Only 3 are DR because to me, those with less than four feel like they're not really practically useful against her. Large attack manipulation will also do well in low pill battles, which was not included here, since most battles against her will not be two or three pill battles, unless your opponent, well, isn't that bright. Amazingly, Kalindra CR still gives this card a run for its money, since Kalindra CR can make a much higher life gap. That's even scarier to me. Still, Kalindra CR is much more brittle than Yamira, and can't win rounds as easily. I, I seriously can't believe that that just came out of my mouth in reference to Kalindra CR. That's how good this card is. Is she worth investing in? Well, let me see. Yes, of course! You don't need me to tell you that, now do you? Of course, the real question is if you can invest in something worth more than some of your entire collections right now. Well, as for her price, I have absolutely no idea. This card could do anything, and if it's scarcer in packs, I wouldn't be surprised if this card retains over 300k as a price tag until it exits packs. I wouldn't be surprised if this card went CR because it has to, or the market is just gonna crash. Just get this card if you can, seriously. You can sell it now for major profit and hope to get another later, or save it and hope it goes CR so you can have one. As for me, it looks like I'm going to be buying some credits for my birthday. Now why would you are create such a card? This is clearly overpowered, is what a lot of you are probably thinking right now. However, I think that this is actually a very necessary card in the game, and it's going to change quite a bit. Now the reason is because this was never meant to be an ELO card. This card is not here because it's supposed to balance the game in the ELO format, in the tourney format. This is clearly a T2 card. 
And if you look at it, the reason it's an important T2 card is that it has two things that are very necessary. Basically, protection for her damage and a very high power. What this card can now do is open up the T2 survivor game for power manipulation clans. You can no longer hide behind Uranus, Grax, and Lady in your normal Sacrom and Uppers deck. Yamira is going to come in and say, hey, it's really nice that you got all that DR, but uh, I'm going to walk in and do 9 damage anyway, and you pretty much have no say in the matter whatsoever. Yamira is even powerful enough to go up against Jackie CR, which is just crazy. And what this is going to mean is that now you're not going to be able to hide behind those olding attack manipulation cards. I believe that this is a direct attempt by Urban Rivals to try and combat the consistent attack power manipulation combos that we have been seeing in Survivor T2 and in pretty much every format since day one. Yamira is a direct affront and assault to that, and this is going to start opening up the Survivor game even more. On one hand, I'm very excited to see this because I think we're going to start seeing a lot more play because now you're going to be able to play um, clans like Frozen, which normally you wouldn't expect to be in T2 because it's got revenge as its bonus, so it doesn't do well on round one. However, you can play a different clan with DR and then sub in Yamira on the second round in order to do a lot of damage. And your opponent is going to actually have to be able to play instead of just old until he wins. I think this is absolutely fantastic for opening up the game and the amount of decks that we're going to see. However, it also scares me to death because it means that getting a long survivor run is going to be a lot more hard now. It's just going to be a lot more difficult because in, whenever you run against someone that, with Yamira, you know that you're going to have to actually play a lot better and when you find yourself down a couple pills, that's just going to cause even more trouble against these power manipulation clans. So, honestly, what I would say here is kudos to you are for doing this. Even though this card looks really overpowered, I think it's about time that the power manipulation clans got an overpowered card that can now compete with all of the already overpowered cards in the attack manipulation uh, kind of area of the game that has basically run free since the beginning of this game. So kudos to you are. Don't look at this card as an OP thing that doesn't deserve to exist, but as Finally, a just release for the power manipulation clans to get them back in the game as actually able to combat all of this ridiculous minus five min one damage cards that have been running around forever. So I just think that this was a beautiful release by UR, but still Yamira needs to get banned right away. Obviously, she should not be allowed an ELO for longer than, oh, I don't know, she should be banned before this video comes out. <laughs> Alright, well, I hope this helps you get a good feel for this week's cards, and make sure to leave me a comment down below with how you feel about this week's release, and what you think about Yamira. Now, let's go and open some packs and see if we can score the currently over 600k monster. At least, that's what she was last time I checked. So, here we are. How many credits do I have? I got 188. I'm probably going to buy even more um, as a present for myself or whatever. Let's open up some of these Mega New Bloods and really, let's, I am really hoping that I'm able to get a hold of at least one. It would be really, really awesome. Of course, not that I need the 600k, but, uh, we'll, we'll see. Oh, why are they all gray? Interesting. So if I already have them, they come out as gray. Alright, anyway, so here, uh, we've got Navi, Floyd, Jasmine, El Mariachi, Daphne, Wagner, and Cindy. Our rare is El Mariachi. I can't see him as rare anyway. It's a good thing I know what most of these are. So we've uh, got El Mariachi is our rare, an absolutely amazing three-star rare for Hurricane. Definitely going to be uh, a new kind of staple. Fantastic copy out bonus um, along with the, I believe it's 6-5, I think. Really, really great card. Uh, we've got Daphne, one of the new cards. Excellent, awesome. Glad to get her unlock her, uh, her new mission down here, uh, Thermonium Seeker. Um, and then we've got, uh, sorry, up here we've got uh, Floyd, absolutely amazing, uh, uncommon, uh, going to cause a lot of trouble in here, much stronger than the old counterpart that used to run free, which was uh, uh, Trish, obviously, and then we've got uh, Cindy as well, who is an absolutely excellent um, high minimum 
uh, power and damage reducer for her clan. Absolutely fantastic. All right, well, let's go ahead and get another pack, see what we can do. All right, we're still aiming, still aiming high. We're looking for Emperor Sloan or Yamira. Yamira would obviously be preferable. All right, no colors, so we know she's not in here. We've got Locke, Baca, Taurus, Diane, uh, Trixie, El Mariachi, and El Jaguar. So two rare pack, excellent. We got both Locke and El Mariachi. Already talked about El Mariachi, so I won't say any more. Locke, absolutely fantastic five-star card. Again, another COB card. These starting to come into full force here in Urban Rivals. Fantastic five-star. Um, definitely going to be worth it well down the line as well. Um, so definitely want to get hold of her as a very solid and stable junk five-star. Baca, again, with his uh, DR, the kind of Uranus staple that is a little more balanced rather than the minus five min one ridiculousness that Uranus is. And then we've got uh, El Jaguar as well, who is going to be an absolutely amazing five star with his damage. Um, just very much looking forward to seeing him hopefully open up T2 for Hurricane. We got two more packs here, two more. Oh, uh, keep our fingers crossed. Not that that actually does anything, but you know, that's what we're supposed to say, right? Come on, come on, come on. Dashiell! Oh, 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 I got so excited there. This is rare. All right. Uh, we got Jem, Cindy, Daphne, Mandy, Dashiell, Angora, and Wagner. Um, uh, again, Cindy, we already talked about. We got a second of Daphne. That's great. Mandy, um, talked about her last week again. Uh, a lot of competition for the three-star spot, but uh, as an uncommon for Sentinel, a very great card. Um, absolutely amazing. And uh, then we've got Dashiell here who is he's okay, but he's also got a lot of clan competition with Rescue. So as a five-star, not sure just how amazing he's going to be overall, but um, definitely adds to the walling power of Rescue. Uh, definitely going to make it much more difficult for people to uh, get around him. Even though he's only got six power, he's got that seven damage, which is fantastic. And um, just a real powerhouse that the, the difficulty is going to be surviving until a late round play with him uh, in order to uh, be able to beat him when he's got 20 plus 20 attack manipulation on him. So we get last week's rare, so that's nice. We're hoping this is the last, last one we've got for right now. How are we going to do... Mim! All right! Excellent! All right, I can't complain there. Mim, uh, fantastic. Oh, did she already drop a lot in prize? It looks like she did. That's fine, though. Um, I'm really happy with this pack. I, I could not be happier. Even though we didn't get one of the, the really big ones, it doesn't matter. That's just being greedy, honestly. Uh, again, we've got Baco, which you already talked about. Mim, amazing two-star card. So glad I finally got a hold of one. I'll probably be holding on to her and not selling her off because I think she's going to be worth quite a bit in the future. Um, I don't know if she's going to be worth that much, but we'll, we'll see where her price is stabilized for real, if that number is correct. Um, and we've got Fraser, which we just got for the first time. Uh, not that big a deal. And then we've got Choco, who is our other uncommon. Um, I think, is Jasmine uncommon as well? I think she is. Jasmine, uh, I know we got her in the first pack, and I didn't mention her. So Jasmine, 8-5, again, copy out bonus. Really good 5-star, but not a lot of damage. That's her biggest issue here. Uh, and then Choco, again, the very kind of niche Pussycats card that um, covers a lot of the issues that normally tend to confound Pussycats like uh, Poison and Heal and all of that minus life manipulation. So with her Cancel Off Life ability, she really holds Pussycats together and can help them in a tight spot. All right, well, I believe that is all for this week's cards. I hope you enjoyed this. Maybe I will come back with another video if... Uh, my wife allows me to spend a little bit of money for my birthday around here to get some more packs. Um, but otherwise, thanks again for watching, guys. Um, if you like this video, then make sure to hit that like button. If you love it, then don't forget to share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget to subscribe for more of my Urban Rivals videos. This is Zonia, and you've been in the zone.